I'm going to you know teach the implementation part. Of course, some fundamentals also I will teach how the navigation works, how you create a policy, how the workflow starts, how you create a control, uh, how the workflow starts and end in a control policy exception. Everything I will teach. Also, I will teach you how to implement a GRC solution within the ServiceNow platform. How you should be able to prepare for the implementation. How to set up the foundational data. You know, to start with the GRC, maybe you need to understand who are the compliance managers, who are the compliance users. You know, GRC users, risk managers, risk users. How you are going to set up those related groups? What roles you should uh, you should be adding to those uh, particular teams or groups? You know how to grant access to these people for the policies or the risk or policy exceptions. Who should be able to handle this? So setting up the foundational data for a GRC, okay, and uh, and the policy and compliance part, including the table details, how how the table architecture is designed in ServiceNow, and the risk management, the risk and advanced risk. If you are looking for advanced risk concept, I can include the advanced risk concept also. So what is the difference between the risk and advanced risk here is, the risk management deals only the classic risk management, you know, any risk that is identified or scoped risk you have, right? For an entity, you identify a risk. Now you want to assess that risk. That is a classic risk where the hierarchy of the risk will not happen. The scores roll up will not happen in the classic risk management. Whereas if you want to see the operational risk, you know, uh, where you want to do an assessment, uh, a qualitative and quantitative assessment both at a time, you know, and also you want to see the risk scores rolling up from the risk level to the enterprise uh, risk statement or a risk framework then that deals within the advanced risk in service now. So there is a classic risk and there is an advanced risk. So if you are looking at even the advanced risk, I can include include that content as well. Otherwise, you know, we can uh, discuss about the classic risk, how the risk assessments will be done, how the assessment can be sent, how the qualitative analysis can be done, how the calculated AME will be calculated automatically by the system. Now, all those things will be discussed in the classic risk how the scores will roll up and the risk events and you know and the, how you can perform quantitative and quantitative analysis how you can perform the rcsa all those things will be dealt in the advanced risk and are, are you sharing are, are you sharing a presentation because i can see only the service now let's say uh, oh. service now um, web browser Oh, is it? Okay, let me stop sharing and appreciate it. Okay, thanks for highlighting that. I thought I'm sh I shared the wrong screen. Can you able to see the IRM implementation one? Uh, no, yes, you can see. Yeah, yes. oh, I can so see it sorry. at my level. So, yeah. so sorry for that. So sorry for that. <laughs> okay, this is the ebook I'm going to share. Yes. Okay, so this is the contents I was talking about. Uh, will help you to prepare an implementation okay and the foundational data how you can prepare the instance with the foundational data as i said you know groups users setting up the users granting the access to the right teams because you know uh, grc teams are sensitive teams you don't want to showcase all the data you know to everyone so how we can grant access to uh, right teams or the right roles right and the policy and compliance management and the risk and advanced risk. I was talking about this one, this slide. No, no. no, I'm talking about this differences, classic risk and the advanced risk. I'm so sorry for that, I shared the wrong screen. And the continuous monitoring, uh, how a control can be continuously monitoring. This, this is where the automation comes. Now, before the external auditor finds, you know, uh, your control is compliant or non-compliant. You want to rectify that, you know, before the external auditor uh, comes and say it is a uh, control test is failed. You know, there should be a continuous monitoring. How that can happen within service now? How the continuous monitoring of the controls can happen? How the continuous monitoring of the risk can happen? How does indicators will impact your 
uh, impact you were calculated in, in the risk management. How this indicators will impact your con control status, whether it is compliant or non-compliant. So I'll be talking about the con continuous monitoring and how you manage the issues. And also I will talk about the audit management. This is the IRM part. So I'll be discussing about the IRM. And if you are interested in the vendor risk management, I will also be discussing about the vendor risk management. The vendor risk management, again, how we can set up the vendor risk, how the tiering assessments can be set up and how it can be triggered, how the vendor risk, uh, uh, vendor risk rating happens, how you manage the vendor portfolio, all the key capabilities of the vendor risk management and how you set up those things in the system and how the vendor portal configuration can be done. How you can integrate GRC to the VRM part, you know, like, uh, now you, you might have a controls related to vendors, okay? And you send some question to vendor, let's say, uh, are you ISO certified? And your vendor says, I'm not ISO certified. Now you want to make the control related to that particular vendor as non-compliant. How that automation can happen from the VRM to the policy and compliance? Now how this GRC can be integrated to VRM? Even I will be talking about that and the out-of-box dashboards and reports, how the forms, tables are set up, all those things I'll be discussing. This is from an implementation standpoint. Any questions? Uh, if I may, uh, Kumar, so mm -hmm. based on what I understood, there will be more focus on risk management. Uh, what about the audit management and compliance management? No, yeah, I'll be talking about the audit and compliance also. There are audit and uh, compliant related things also. Let me share. Share diagram part of it. So basically, are we going, are we, are you going, let's say, to, to, to share with us your experience and are you going to explain about for the policy and compliance an overview, what are the role and responsibility the compliance groups, uh, are you gonna talk about how to build control objectives, yes. the policy life cycle and so on? Yes, you are right. You okay, are right. okay. So you, you can see here the policy record life cycle. What is the auto box you know, policy record life cycle that offers? You may customize this one. For example, in the policy record life cycle, in service now, out of box, when you send for an approval, for example, if, the, if it goes, uh, you know, uh, if you select two approvers, out of box, how it goes is two approvers have to approve this to publish this policy. Now, as part of implementation, what are the changes you may expect? Maybe one organization says, hey, I can have only one approver, you know, even though I select two approvers or a group approval, at least one member of the group approves it, it is fine for me to publish a policy. So it depends. So what is the out of box workflow and how you can customize this workflow as part of your implementation? This doesn't require any scripting skills, but you should be able to understand some, you know, uh, data structures or some the workflows, how it is, how the data is flowing. You should be able to explain your developer where which flow should be changed to achieve your requirements. To that be teaching. Those I'll be talking about what are the flows, what are the tables, okay, how the state flows within the policy, okay. everything. I'll be Thank you, Kumar. Yes. And another topic, if I may ask as well, which is really important at my level, it's about, let's say, reporting and dashboarding. Mm -hmm. Will be something about it as well? Okay. So one thing is, ServiceNow offers a lot of out of box reports, okay? If you want to generate a your own report, you need to understand the service no fundamentals. Let, let me share my screen uh, one more time to the instance or I'll share the full screen. Just in this. Okay, can you able to see the instance? Yeah, I can see it. Okay, service no fundamentals deals with 
a lot of things okay that is all in the fundamentals uh i can teach you some fundamentals but it is not part of the grc course usually but because some people may have already service no knowledge if everyone says i do i have limited service no knowledge i want to understand fundamentals then i can definitely teach some fundamentals before grc itself but if some participants say i already know service no i want to excel in the grc area then you know it will be difficult that nilima will coordinate let me show how service no works now there is something called reports reports module okay now i want to create a new report so you can create a new report irrespective of the application you are working on so it might be grc it might be incident management it might be security operations you just need to understand on which table you are generating a report so reports is a platform functionality so this comes in the fundamentals whereas if you say hey i just want to understand at my level what are the service now reports available within the system okay then you name any module okay let's take compliance for example you just click overview there is an overview for every module you can see here under policies and procedures there is a overview under compliance there is a overview and under policy acknowledgement there is a overview you just click on that overview module you will see lot of dashboards and reports these are out of box reports okay if it if it doesn't suffice your purpose then you can create your own reports and dashboards uh, you may ask hey uh, my compliance management team wants a different reports and the board of directors want different reports your developer always have the capability to configure a report and if you have the right roles you can also build your own reports if you have access to table for example policies i want to generate a very simple report this is again comes in the fundamentals it's not related to grc you take any application in service now you can generate a bar chart and pie chart from the list layout directly you can also export into the uh, export in pdf and excel sheets and the xml format and csv format this is a respect of the role you have you can generate a bar chart and a pie chart you just need to you know understand how to build this report that's it how the list layouts work now you want to do a group by with the type of policy or the owning group so you just need to you know keep those group by fields and the count or the average how you want to do this report so it's a fundamental capability okay it's not something Great, related to grc but it is a fundamental capability and of course i will not discuss hey, each and every report that uh, service now out of box offers because how this works is if i type reports and if i click all reports for example i have 1417 reports in my uh, system because i have multiple products installed and if i type only policy for example there are 50 reports in policy and compliance management i don't want to waste time going through each and every report that is available in system thus we can you know anybody can go to this module and and see whether any report related to my requirement is available or not for example i want to see all the you know assessments that are due that my control owners are not responding so there is something called pass due assessment you just click view report and see if it will suffice your purpose or not so i will just show you how you can access the reports out of box reports and how you can configure but i will not go through each and everything because there are a lot of things we can discuss during this course instead of just uh, going through each and every report making sense thank you kumar yeah yeah for sure thank you any any other questions from the content wise or you know? yeah uh, so i have a question yes uh, so what i want to know is uh, for policy and compliance how important it is to have ucf and will your training cover like uh, 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 you know configuring the model having ucf or without ucf okay so first and, we need to yeah go ahead for, for, that's why one question first question and the second is uh, of you know uh, once the grc setup is done what is the order of preference 
in which the configuration should be done like for all these modules like uh, which one should be configured first risk management policy compliance or audit and this very good question so first thing uh, we need to understand one thing is in the client location you should have the common control hub access okay for the ucf i'm talking about the ucf for who doesn't know common control hub you can type in google common control hub okay this is a third party tool where it have around 700 to 800 standard related citations and the control objectives data will be there this is nothing to do with service now your client or your organization should have the control common control hub account first okay now to integrate with this common control hub the ucf plugin enables a seamless integration with this account and you can import all the authority documents citations and control objectives controls related to those particular standards so you need to have an account here first then only you can import otherwise just having the ucf plugin will not suffice any purpose and if we don't have can we still configure or uh, the policy and compliance effectively if we do not have ucf or yes yes system. as i said you know uh, this is just a place where all the standard informations are there now you okay. Can, okay now you if you have a data okay a policy you can uh, policy can have anything for example authority documents are nothing but the third party standard your organization is not comply with iso standard but you have you know uh, your internal policies or you have to comply with your regional laws or you have to uh, abide with your country laws those are also your policies and procedures right so you need to configure those policies you mean those each and every control we have to input it here you can import it yes of course you, see you might have already uh, you know comply with iso or the sox uh, sox compliance but you never had the common control hub still huh. your data will be there in your excel sheets right you already yeah. comply with the iso that means you already have those controls and citations related data somewhere else you can import it huh. so you can you can do the policy configuration without ucf why ucf oh. always there will be some additional citations or there will be some uh, citations will be removed right your iso will never be the same right your iso standard will keep on up upgrading or your sox uh, sox standards will keep on upgrading even your itil standard earlier a uh, few years before it was itil v3 now it is itil v4 so there will be always some requirements adding to your standards how you can bring those you know without a manual thing then your common control hub or the regulatory change management if you are following some regulators this will then help you mean to, to say we can data. just ex we can just import our excel file of yes. iso 27000 control so authority yes. uh, that so that will be authority document the citation That's will it. be the control name into service now yes yes you like the, the excel file completely can be imported that's it you have authority okay. document because it's a table i i hope uh, you know you are you have some service now experience i'm learning i mean i'm i'm actually doing some self learning uh, do you have service now fundamentals experience uh, no i don't okay okay there is a concept called transform maps you just provide uh, you know excel sheet or csv file or anything i will just show you something that is again a fundamental capability yeah please this is uh, this again your developers can do that now you choose the data source here you can choose a different data source either it is a jdbc connection or an excel sheet or you know anything and you you name the source and we can import the data make sense you can give the csv you can give you can say this is storing in some ftp server you know you just give those credentials how i can access the data source i can import it and if you want to just import the file i can import it but, but how developer, does it how does it then organize itself under that the specific is a transform up, that is a capability something for something we call as transform maps oh okay that is a system capability now you need to prepare this transform map i think i have done something uh, okay this is a uh, out of box one i will show this one thomson router if you have any regulatory changes happening you know you want to see those regulatory changes updated in your service now system 
this is a thomson router transformer that comes with the uh, grc platform now you can see this is the source field okay you your excel column may be different or your data source column may be different how you want to transfer that data into the service now tables so you have something called you know transform maps where you transform the data from your source to your target system okay. with this you can even schedule this okay so it can be one time input so you can do it this is the platform capability and we always do some data imports as part of any implementation not only grc got it okay so this is one question i hope i answered your first question yes yes and the second question there is no dependency absolutely no dependency between uh, you know uh, between the applications uh, even i see customers started with their audit management okay they when i asked why you are, why you want to go with audit management uh, if you don't implement the policy and compliance you don't have the controls in system you cannot perform a right control testing then they said in the audit management they perform only two tasks one is interviews and walk throughs so they he went with audit management implementation first because the priority was audit management for that particular client no, not even uploading the evidences i think i think i, I no, that, is fine, right? that, that is fine that is fine because they are not performing the control test i'll, I'll show you how this works uh -huh. um, so let me go to any engagement for example i will take any engagement that is in field work for example during the field work of audit uh, you can you can do a control testing or you might be performing some interviews you might be performing some uh, you know uh, walk throughs so out of box service now have different things the audit task can be either a walk through or a control test or an interview now you don't want to perform any control test as part of this audit then i don't need the control data right it's just an interview and the walk through and the interview record can hold the evidences okay now this is an interview and what is the activity you have done and you know uh, let me save this one or let me open an interview record if i have any so it remains as an evidence that they have conducted the interview and the walk through that's it that's it yeah. let me open any activity here so you can see the evidence module here so you can directly you know add an evidence right so you no need to go for a control testing that means you no need to implement the policy and compliance first you can have the audit because you just want to see uh, you know the audit engagement flow this is the audit start date end date what are the activities they have performed uh, uh, what are the observations what are the issues right? mm -hmm. all those things and what are the evidences they have collected what are the observations what are the activities they have that's it Got so it. it is purely independent uh, if it if it doesn't require any integration for example you say Hey, I want to see my risk and also related controls for those entities. Then I should have the policy compliance as well as the risk. If you say I I don't want to see any related controls for this particular risk record, let me open the risk record. It will be easy for you to visualize. Now this is my risk register. and this is something related to socks for example socks related risk now you say i don't want to see the related controls controls are from your policy and compliance whereas risk is from your risk management if you don't have a requirement to see this kind of things you know related controls right then i don't have any dependency with the policy compliance i can straight away implement the risk management so it's purely how how the organization works and what is their priorities you can uh, do implementation okay okay so similarly probably the thing is with the notification also right notification and the notification the is individual uh, it's an individual thing you know for each and every table there is absolutely no dependency at all now you say whenever i created a whenever i sent a risk to the risk owner for assessment i want to trigger a notification 
So the notification will be created directly here. You see on the table on the form. If you have admin access, you can directly create notification here. This is again a platform capability. So when you are creating a new notification, it creates on that particular table. Now all the risk stores in a risk table and you are creating notification on a risk table. Absolutely no dependency on anything. But you need to configure at least the uh, outbound email address uh, in the email notification section. Not required, not required. Not required? We just need to say to whom it should send. Right now, if you say risk owner, okay, who will receive? It should be configured with the email server. That is different. But, but how from ID, the from ID? No, from ID will be always the you know air plus. That is again the fundamentals. That's what I was talking about. That is the fundamentals. How you set up the email configurations is fundamentals. Oh, okay. Because ZRC is not an not the first application. I believe, you know. Most of the clients might have already using ITSM. Very rare customers, you know. Currently, I'm working with one customer is a manufacturing client. Their priority is ERC and SecOps. Okay, mm -hmm. so they don't have ITSM in place. Now I have to configure everything for them. That your, you know, developers can do that. If already ITSM is in place or some other application is already using ServiceNow platform. You no need to uh, do any setup. You just say to whom this notification will be sent. Now I will say the risk owner. That's it. A risk owner is a field from this table. The risk owner will receive this notification. Even the owning group should receive. Then that's it. This is how you will configure. When to send. I will say the state change to access. access sorry. When the state changes, right? When the state changes to access. This is the platform capability. I believe, you know, you guys will be at the high level. You know, you will be demonstrating or you will be implementing or you will be driving the GRC implementations. So this will, this you can leave it to your developers. It is good to know, you know, how this can be configured, but you know, uh, this can be performed by developers. By the admins? By the admins or developers, mostly developers, not the admins. It was you want to see the UAT testing, right? Whether this notification is uh, triggered at the right state or not. You, you want to test, you want to perform a user acceptance testing. So let's go through a development life cycle instead of configuring directly by the admin in production. All right, okay. So you can see here, it's this notification is on this particular table. So any notification you write, it will be on some table. So on which table and what are the conditions you written based on this, your notifications will be triggered. This is a platform capability, absolutely platform capability. You will have some out of box notifications. If you don't want, you, you can just customize it or you can deactivate those. You can uh, activate your own notifications. Any other questions from the content wise or anything else? 